Hello and welcome to the third instalment of Bosch Professional Live UK. I'm Chris Murray, professional power tool trainer here in Denham and I'm here with my colleague Danny and Lawrence, our product manager, UK product manager is going to be joining us a little later to talk about Dan. Uh, combi drills today, basically we're looking into uh, machines that pretty much every one of you out there is going to have or have used at some point in your, in your careers. So a uh, critical part of the machine. Uh, product catalogue for, for pretty much everybody in the trade. That's right, yeah, and don't forget, as this is a live stream, we want to get your questions in. So feel free to pop your questions into the chat, and throughout the duration of the live stream, we'll be popping in every now and then, and we'll be getting Rob to pick out some questions, and me and Danny and Lawrence will be answering your questions live on the live stream. So I guess we should start with the most obvious thing. Uh, what is a drill driver? Or more importantly, what's a combi drill, and what's a drill driver? Now, as an example, I'll take out the uh, GSP 18V-55 here. Okay, this is a standard 18 volt combi. Okay, we've got two different machines that are similar to each other. We have a GSR and we have a GSB. Now a GSR is a drill driver and a GSB is a combination drill driver or as you call it, a combi. The main difference is if you, if you look at the mode wheel on the top here, it will have three settings. And the third one is hammer, which means it has a percussion or an impact mechanism, okay? But what does an impact mechanism look like? What does it look like inside a drill like this, Danny? Well, basically, last week we looked into uh, pneumatic hammers. Um, this time we're looking into a percussion hammer. Um, basically, from this side, I've got a, um, a, uh, an example here from a corded drill, um, mainly because it's easier to see the, uh, the mechanism here. So this is based inside the machine. Uh, the motor drum uh, runs the, uh, the drill spindle here. Um, you can see, obviously, you've got your drill bit at the end there. Now, when in not in hammer mode, there's a plate that sits in here that separates these two parts of the hammer mechanism. Um, you can see on here and also on the, um, on the mating face there, you've got many different ramps. Um, these are designed to, when engaged, these ramps interlock um, and provide um, a linear impact uh, down the drill bit into the workpiece, allowing you to break up the material and proceed with drilling through harder materials. So uh, what you're describing there is what one of the tech specs is, is going to be a BPM. So whenever you're looking yes. at the specs of a combi, there'll be a certain, certain spe specification in there, which is BPM. It tends to be in about the tens of thousands. Um, and that's what you're looking at, that rate of BPM, beats per minute. Now, you, can, you can see from the amount of yeah. uh, ramps there are on a single um, rotation of the drill there, there's a lot of beats per minute right. provided by this particular type of mechanism. Right. So obviously within the market, we have, as we discussed earlier, GSRs and GSBs. Uh, drill drivers and combis. So the question always is, you know, why do you have two machines that essentially do the same kind of thing? A combi does everything a drill driver does. Yeah. Now the reason is it's because of different areas, different locations, different regions and different preferences. People, some people just prefer to have a drill driver. Now for example, in, on the continent, they tend to be working in two different kinds of material. Yeah. They tend to work in timber-based housing or it's going to be masonry or concrete-based. And as we discussed in the previous live stream, if you're going to be starting to work in materials such as concrete, you really have to be stepping up to an STS rotary hammer of some kind. However, in the UK, we're, we're quite lucky, yeah. Yeah, we're mainly red brick um, or wood or iron um, RSJs, that sort of material. And for that, a combi drill is absolutely perfect. Yeah. Um, obviously, anything bigger that you set, you uh, upgrade to an STS plus machine for that, yeah. that particular application. Absolutely. Right, I think we might skip the first section. I don't know if we've any questions in yet, but I think really you want to get to the, the main part is we want to start talking about the machines. So I'd love to get Lawrence in. And Lawrence, what machine have you got for us today? We're going to start right at the bottom of our range. Hi guys, thanks Chris. Hi, um, so this is the GSP 18V-21. It is our entry level combi drill. Um, it's an older generation brush machine. It's been with us for a fair few years now. Sorry guys, right I'm just going to jump in here. That's all right. Apologies, uh, we just got a bit of an audio issue. So I'm just going to pause the stream for a moment and we'll be, uh, we'll be right back.
It's me. <laughs> Sorry about that guys. Obviously we're the headquarters for Bosch UK, so we've got a lot of other divisions working in the same premises, and sometimes we do get a little bit of interference. We can blame our automotive colleagues, they're probably running some kind of complicated diagnostic and interrupting of our mics. So, we were going to talk about the GSB 18 V-21, which is our entry level brushed combi, right? Yes indeed, exactly. So, entry level, brushed combi, been with us for a few years, been an exceptionally popular tool. Um, it's ideal for light applications, um, the thing that gives it away is actually the plastic chuck at the front. It's the only one in the range of the plastic chuck uh, currently. But it's got a two-speed gearbox. It's got 20 uh, torque settings on the top here. Uh, a hammer action as well uh, for some light masonry drilling, I'd say. About 1,800 RPM maximum no load speed and 27,500 BPM. So, sorry, 27,000 on the nose BPM. Okay, so as I say, suitable for light applications. Now I've noticed something on the side there, which is relatively unusual nowadays when it comes to our 18 volt combis. Um, they're brushes, aren't they? Yeah, the brush. Is right, Danny? Yes. Yeah, replaceable. It's got um, replaceable brushes on it. Um, something that we uh, don't really see much of now, um, largely because we're moving towards brushless machines in, in, mm. in uh, as, a, as a rule anyway. Um, but yeah, it does have. A, it's got a certain amount of uh, user serviceability to it. So. Yeah, so ideal for, do we say ideal for people coming out of college and things like that? Yes, yeah, it's a good uh, first starter. Um, yeah, it's a great initial uh, a buy into the, the Bosch range. Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, so I mean, if I was going to save a little bit more money, I might stretch out for a slightly different machine. So what I've got here is the GSB 18 V-28. Okay, so it's a slightly up spec version of the one that Lawrence was talking about earlier. Uh, the main significant difference, as you notice, now it has a all metal ROM chuck, still 13 millimeter, of course, uh, and a few other ergonomic upgrades, such as the LED has been improved, so now it's now a lensed LED. You're jumping up from 21 newton meters of soft torque up to 28 newton meters of soft torque, uh, an RPM of maximum RPM of 1900. Now, other things about this machine, well, I mean, generally speaking, it's a, it's a similar kind of tool, it's just slightly up spec. It's got a few extra features, and I really think that that's an ideal step up from the 21 or an ideal starter machine. It's still brushed, of course, but regardless of that, an excellent entry level product to have to join into yeah. the, the Bosch professional range on, on combi drills. Budget dependent, yeah, brilliant, mm -hmm. brilliant option. Yep, 38 mils in wood, 13 mil in steel, and in masonry. So this will do a lot of the kind of work that even just the average tradie out there might need. So, and don't get wrong, it's, it's not even a very heavy tool. It's only about 1.2 kilos. So, an excellent tool for the, well, any trainee out there, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, we've obviously talked about these two machines already. So, these are our existing range of brushed machines. But you've got something else for us, Dan. Yeah. Uh, the next one to step up to is the, um, is the 55. So, we're looking at 55 um, newton meters of, uh, of max torque here. Um, in addition, this is a, the first entry level uh, brushless machine. So, um, fantastic addition to the, um, to the range. Uh, again, we've got the 20 uh, individual torque settings on here, full metal ROM chuck, um, two speed, forward reverse, and it's got the optimised uh, lens as well mm. for the LED. It's so obviously, the, one of the main advantages of brushless um, is the fact that, A, it's relatively maintenance free, so it will last for the, you know, the, the motor and the, the motor and the gearbox and all the other components will last the lifetime of the machine. We say, the fact you've moved up to a brushless machine means that it's up to two times longer lifetime compared to a brush machine. Mm -hmm. And because brushless is more efficient, because you don't have the friction and the sparking that you would have with a traditional TC motor, you'll expect up to three times additional or longer run time, so how, much ba how many holes you're going to get out of a battery. Mm -hmm. So if you can make the step up to brushless, we thoroughly recommend it. You'll get extra benefit to you as a user. It's the way the entire range is going at the moment anyway. So yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. OK, so let's move on to the next machine in the range. Yep. Which is, of course, the very familiar uh, and well-established GSB 18 V-60C. Again, Tool's been around with us for about five years now. Very, very popular, very, very versatile tool. <coughs> I'd describe it as our mid-range combi drill. Um, it produces up to 60 newton meters uh, of, of torque, so very, very competent at drilling and screw, screwing into wood uh, and wood fixing, uh, sorry, fixings into wood. 1900 RPM and 28,500 BPM. So it's actually a very, very competent drill when working with masonry um, of, of, of common sort of types in uh, residential construction. So it's a workhorse, it's a great all rounder. Um, 
I'm a big fan of this drill. As I say, it has been with us for a while. It's also got some fantastic sensor technology features. Okay, it's a connector tool, as you can see on the side. This is where the connectivity module goes, so you can link it to your phone and control some of the parameters. And it also has kickback control. Okay, so if the tool binds up midway through the application and it moves suddenly, it won't break your wrist, it won't cause an injury because it's got that all-important safety feature that you need when you really get to this sort of level of torque and performance. Yeah, and I mean, we discussed uh, kickback control when we had our live stream la last couple of weeks ago uh, on SDS Roto Hammer. And it's exactly the same when you're working in a combi. You don't know, you might not know what you're drilling into, you might hit some bit of reinforced material, the drill bit will bind, and unfortunately you get something called reactive torque, uh, and that's where instead of the drill bit moving, uh, it, the user does. You, yeah, it tries <laughs> to make you move instead, and unfortunately, your wrist only has a certain amount of degrees that it can turn. Yeah. So it's an excellent feature to reduce that kind of injury. And you know, even in other types of things, when you're working up a ladder, yep. um, that force alone, if that machine's still going and doesn't cut off, that force it alone, you know, could so, throw you off. Yeah. yeah. So it's an excellent feature. So th whenever I'm talking to users, uh, if if it's within the if within the user's price range. I really recommend always stepping up to this kind of model. We call it our dynamic series. Honestly, with that safety feature alone, you know, that's usually enough for people to want to upgrade to that model. Okay, so dynamic series. So what's next? What's next, Dan? Yeah, we're moving up into the robust series now. So uh, here we have the, um, the, the 110. So we're looking at 110 newton meters of maximum torque here. You can tell, obviously, it's got the larger side handle on there to, uh, to cope with the reactionary torque. Um, that you, you would get if you're whole sawing or using a, a high drag application. Uh, full metal gearbox we have here, so metal externals, metal internals. Um, we got the ROM again, the 13 mil maximum diameter, mm -hmm. three jaw chuck. Um, you're looking at um, 83 millimeters, I believe it is, maximum drilling diameter into wood on this machine, which is a massive step up from the previous machine. That's right, you're stepping up from 38 millimeters all the way up to 82 millimeters mm -hmm. in wood. 82. So, yeah, huge, huge jump. Huge jump, and that's all because of the jump in torque, because now you're up to a much more powerful machine, because this mm. is essentially our flagship product. Mm. Yeah. High rotation speed on this as well, again, so you're up in the beats per minute again. Yeah, it's an excellent that. machine. I mean, really heavy duty, man. This is if you're using combis day in, day out, and you're doing quite aggressive work. And you really need, A, to drive, you drive drill bits or working applications that are really tough, mm. or you need to work in larger holes, and more importantly, you really need to work quickly. Now, this is the kind of machine that's would thoroughly recommend GSP 18 V 10 C, yeah. and obviously yeah. I think you said already it's connected to yeah, like, connected like the GSP 60. Same as the others. Any, any friend, anyone from the, from the initial mm. connected one onwards is all going to be connected. Yeah. Uh, Style-wise, it's there's a slight change um, because it's the robust series, so you've changed from the normal switching mode wheel. Yep. Or the traditional mode wheel here. So all the controls are on top here. Mm. To uh, we've just got the one switch there that, that goes from between the drill function, screwdriver function, and hammer function on the right there. So that's excellent if you're, well, I've got big gloves on really. Yes. I mean, it's, yeah. don't get me wrong, the system's not hard to use, um, but foolproof. Right. Mm. So, uh, Rob, have we had any questions coming on off the stream yet? Yeah, yeah, we have. We've had a couple. We've got one from Stuart Andrews here, and he said, uh, actually, it's not a question, it's a statement. Uh, just got a GSB 18V 60C. It's superb to replace an older Bosch combi which died after a fall from height. Well, so, uh, <laughs> I would like to know what kind of height. That always imp it always impresses me. <laughs> I mean, they are they are a lot of our machines have uh, have something we used to call Dura Shield, mm -hmm. um, but essentially they're all drop tested for at least was it two meters? It's two meters, yeah. Yeah, I mean, don't don't test us on this. You know, I'm pretty sure they'll do mm -hmm. quite well at other heights, but rated two meters shouldn't be a problem. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, that's probably off a roof. <laughs> yeah, it's got, something, it's got, it's something got quite significant because yeah. we've seen these tools uh, torture tested and they they hold up really well. So, mm. unfortunate about your old tool, but I'm very happy that you're very happy about the 60 because honestly, as I say, that is a cracking machine. Mm. Oh, and we forgot to mention, did you say it's got kickback control as well? Yes, uh, yeah. kickback control from this point onwards. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, yeah. Just, just kickback control alone makes the 60 worth it. But obviously, the specs themselves excellent. Okay, any other, Rob? Yeah, indeed. We've got one from Briar Sport HD. He says, when will the new drill hammer model be available? The drill hammer model? Drill hammer. Follow up that question. Give us a bit more context on what that is. Is Yeah, is it an SDS plus attachment, perhaps, for one of the FlexiClip models? Mm. Um, that could be it. Yeah, yeah if, you could, if mm. you could just clarify for us, we'll do our best to answer the question. 
Yeah, I mean, he, he adds a little bit more detail, well, potentially to that one. He just says uh, more detail about GBH187-LI. Is that a new model that's potentially he's referring to? It's an American market, I think. Uh, it? Yes. It's it sounds American like it from that naming convention. Mm. Uh, so we're not familiar with the American naming convention, or all of the naming conventions mm. that they have over in the States here. Um, they use different model numbers. Same tool, essentially, but yeah. um, I'm really sorry, I, I'm not familiar with it. That's we can fine. always follow up on that one for yeah. you, though. As discussed, anything we can't answer in this live stream, we'll either pick up in the, the subsequent one, or we'll just answer in the chat once we've had a little look. I mean, I think, for example, we had some questions about blue collar. Yes. And the blue yeah. collar is essentially a similar system to the GD868. Um, and it's basically like a system that you sit, sit on the wall. Actually, you sit it on the drill bit. This actually. actually sits on the drill bit, yes. Yeah, and it helps with yeah. dust extraction. So it's mm. very similar to our GDE system, but we just don't do it in the UK. So mm. we're a bit, we weren't confused, but we just didn't know what it was because yeah. it's exclusive to the US. Mm. So just like that, if you get any questions in this stream, we can't answer. We'll just follow up in the following one, just like we did there. Mm. Okay, uh, any more? Should we carry on? Yeah, carry on. Okay. I mean, if, if there's any more questions that you guys have, just throw them straight into the chat and we will get to them later on during the stream. So uh, don't be afraid, just ask and we're, we're happy to answer anything you've got. Okay, well, I would like to get going and start talking about our ultimate flagship. Yeah. Well, I say, I call that the flagship, but it is technically the flagship until, yeah. until our bi-turbo, our first ever, actually, first ever bi-turbo brushless 18 volt combi came out. Now this is the GSB 18 VR, GSB 18 uh, 150C. So it's a 150 newton meters of max torque. So it is a huge upgrade. 100% explains the size of the side handle. I mean, uh, you can yeah. see that that alone should explain it all. Obviously, it's based on the design of the Robust series. So you can see that it's the all metal chuck gearbox housing as well as the mode selector here. But there are other features as well, other than just the fact that this machine is running up to 150 newton meters of torque. It's got a BPM rate, so a beats per minute rate of 30,000 BPM. And now you're, being up, you're able to work in materials you know, up to 150 millimeters when hole sawing in wood, 16 millimeters in steel, and 20 millimeters in masonry. So this mm. is a huge upgrade, a really, really powerful tool. There are some smart features as well, because it has a C in the name. Because the CNA is a connected tool, it uses the GCY module here. And we've got uh, a couple of features on the bottom here. This one is the first machine in the range to have electronic angle detect. You see this button here. It gives you a number of settings to allow you to calibrate the tool at a set angle. And then the machine will tell you whether or not you're on angle or if you're slightly off when drilling. That's exceptionally useful for, um, exceptionally useful for working with drills, uh, large fittings, so large screws or screws drilling holes at a set angle. Now how you do that is you will set the preset, you set the machine on a surface and you then you'll set the angle you want, let's say 60 degrees. You let the tool calibrate at this angle and then once you're here you can adjust it here and you can see the LED in the top will go from yellow to green and it works in all four axes and lets you know whether or not you're on angle which is excellent especially if you're running really long screws, really long drill bits. So you look, you look in there at two presets, you've got 45 and 60 degrees, but what's the third one? All right, if you show up on the close-up camera, you've got the third saying here, it's a little smartphone. And as I said, because this is a smart or a connected device, you can set this within the app, uh, and you can change that value between anything between 0 and 90. So, okay. Rob, if we can cut to uh, the smartphone screen. Of course. Yep, and you, and you can see here, EAD, electronic angle detect. And then you can adjust that between anything between zero and 90 degrees. There we go. So Dan's doing that for me now, you see. So all the way down to 90, eventually. There you go. There you go. So any degree you want to set it to, so say 56 degrees. I can't think why you'd want 56 degrees, but you but can. You may want it. The HMI flashes blue at the bottom here. And then if I put it to the phone, let that calibrate. And there you go. Now we've got somewhere here, 56 degrees, there we go, 56 degrees. For those out there, it's about that angle. <laughs> okay, if we kick back into the app, there's a few other features I'd love to show you on this machine. Uh, one of them, obviously, is that you get things like you can alter the work light, so you can change the brightness. Um, but actually, one thing I really like is if you are using the machine and you just get a kickback incident. Okay, you probably can't see on that screen, but there's a little indicator on the bottom right uh, where it shows whether or not you had a kickback activation. So if I do another one here, and you can see in real time, every time that happens, it's logged. 
So that's quite useful for many reasons, Dan, yeah? This gives you the opportunity to say if you were to hand the drill off to an apprentice or someone that you're training, mm -hmm. um, if you, you can take a look at the machine afterwards, take a look at the app and find out if there are any kickbacks that have been activated and, and maybe offer a bit of assistance, maybe a little bit of training or advice uh, to prevent possible injury in the future mm -hmm. um, if they happen to purchase into a machine without that feature. So yeah. it's, it's, it's a good um, opportunity to, uh, to teach a few people. So it's just one of the many so. features across the wide range of connected tools that we've got. When it comes to the Combi, especially this one, you know, it makes sense. You wouldn't want to, you couldn't be able, you wouldn't be able to make these changes on a control panel on here. So having a smart tool that's connected to your phone allows you to do a lot of things, not just like, not just things like angle detect. Yeah. Now, obviously I want to make it clear because this is a bi-turbo machine. So this is our latest uh, innovation. This is our most powerful brushless motors, but it's only as powerful as the battery platform you've got. So that's why you can see at the bottom here, we've obviously got a Procore 18 volt battery platform. Now this machine is optimized to run with either the 5.5, the 8 and the 12 amp hour batteries. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, 12 amp hour would be excellent for runtime, but you're going to have to do some working outs if you're going to use that machine on the regular. So we'd recommend 5.5 and 8 amp hour perfect for this machine. Yeah. Now that allows you to draw the maximum amount of amps out of the battery to drive the motor, the big powerful motors that gives this machine the 150 newton meters of torque. And obviously on the market today, the most powerful 80 volt combi on the market, 150 yeah. newton meters. Now, we did some uh, drilling early on today because mm -hmm. we realized that us just saying numbers at you doesn't really mean anything. So obviously, it's pictures or it didn't happen as always. So we've got a couple of videos uh, that we'd like to show you. First one we'd like to show you is where we've got Dan next, was next door and he was doing some auger drilling. Uh, we can line that up, can we, Dan? Uh, Rob? So as you can see here, we're running the same setup we've got here, an 8 amp power Procore battery. Uh, what we're going to be doing is a, was it a 27 mil? 26 mil ah, auger 26, bit, yeah. 26 mil auger drill bit, uh, auger bit, and obviously these are high drag applications. So normally you'd want to have that in gear one, which is low speed, high torque. But instead, because we've got buckets, and I mean buckets of torque, we're going to put it in speed two, so high speed. Right. Absolutely epic. You're finding you can actually brace yourself for, a, for doing a task. So, so you are clenching your teeth a little bit there, Dan, I can see. But, uh, yeah. you you can, naturally you would, speed. but the, 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 the <laughs> drill just pulls, itself, you, it? pulls you through, no problem. Yeah. Look at that, two holes for one. <laughs> 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 well, obviously, we, did a, couple, we did a couple of runs on that, and obviously, each time, exactly the same. It yeah. doesn't even matter if you're hitting a knot, you're going to go right through it because you've got so much torque. Yeah. So if you're really needing to do an application, even though a high draw application, mm. because it's got 150 newton meters of max torque, you know, you've got such a high ceiling to work with, so you can work mm. exceptionally fast. There was no change in motor tone throughout that. It was just constant all the way. Exactly. Um, so the, the next demo that we had lined up is we were doing something, some more, more drilling in, in wood, and we we're using the self-cut speed bits. So uh, you can line that one up as well for us, Rob. So here you can see a number of, of the of self-cut speed bits. We decided to go for the big one. We went for a 32 mil, because well, why not? Let's go for the biggest one we, could, we had our, on hand. Uh, same again, obviously this is a quite an aggressive spade bit. Um, uh, typically you'd want to use that in a high torque settings, a low speed high torque, but again, yep. just, just chuck it into speed two and see how we get on. So it's very aggressive, very, very fast. Okay, and then on the reverse angle, we thought we'd do another hole just to show you that despite it being so fast, and very aggressive fast. So it's very progressive. It literally pulls you through the material, doesn't it? Yeah, remarkably clean on the breakout as well. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, which is quite unusual with, a, with, a, with your average spade bit. Yeah. Uh, I mean, as an example, I mean, you probably couldn't see it in the video, but I mean, this is the actual piece of wood that we were using. It's not lightweight. It's relatively quite thick. Um, yeah, it's, it's not nothing yeah. to be sniffed at, really, to be honest. No, so it's a pressure-treated uh, deck um, rafter, I think. Deck, uh, yeah, exactly. And if you don't believe us, yeah. Uh, we're happy to do as many videos as you need to prove the <laughs> sheer power of this machine. One of Chris's favourite things in the world is to stress test this machine. And um, yes. yeah, it's, it has outperformed all expectations so far, I think. Yeah, I think uh, one of the most extreme things we ever did with this machine uh, is we were trying to, we didn't try, we succeeded yep. quite happily mm. uh, driving, well, this, at the time it was a half a metre screw, 12 mil, uh, 500 oh, millimetres, yep. straight into uh, construction timber, didn't pre-drill it just using the raw torque. Uh, obviously, you did have to step it down to speed one, yep. because that was an extremely difficult task. Uh, 
We yeah. found initially it was snapping the uh, snapping the <laughs> screwdriver pieces in half. Yeah, we had the, the torque was that high. Exactly. Um, and to be honest, look, it'll do up to a meter. Mm. A meter long screw, mm. so I mean it's plenty of torque. And if you had the opportunity to see that at one of our innovation days, then yeah, I mean you, you, you wouldn't have let, you wouldn't have believed we could do it. Mm. No. Now uh, we've got I think we've got another video lined up. One more, obviously another very typical uh, use of a combi drill, not with the impact mechani mechanism, obviously, uh, is going to be hole sawing. So have you got that one for us, Rob? I absolutely do. I just want to want to know that uh, as it's actually sawing, you might not be able to be heard as you talk over the top of it, just because the uh, the sound of it going through the material might be a challenge. So okay. when it's doing its job, stay quiet. <laughs> <laughs> well, while I'm allowed to talk, you can see here that uh, it's a uh, 100 and uh, what was that 20? 27. 27 mil. And this machine yeah. specs to do up to 150. That's part. Of, that hole saw is part of our expert range. So that is a carbide tooth uh, hole saw mm -hmm. set. What Dan's done there is he switched off kickback control, and we'll explain why after this video. Okay, well, uh, blindingly fast. Um, as I said, it'll do up to 150 mil of that. Yep. Uh, if you're using a progressor hole saw instead of using the carbide one, um, even faster. Yeah. 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 So uh, I don't know what I was going to say other than. That's, it was 18 mil OSB. It was, um, it was ridiculously fast, uh, as you saw in the video. Mm. Um, the main reason for switching off the kickback control. Um, Applications like that, especially when you're going up to 150 mil diameter hole saws, uh, the drag created could potentially uh, knock the kickback protection and stop the drilling yeah. progress. So you switch it off, brace yourself. Um, obviously, because uh, you've, you've, you've deactivated the, um, the safety feature there, mm -hmm. uh, but you have the side handle to hold on to. Um, Thoroughly recommended to use. Yes, <laughs> definitely with the, with the side handle, yeah. As so, an um, yeah, it just allows you to control it. That's right, yeah, and if I punch into the close-up camera very quickly, I'll show you that feature, and I'll show you another safety feature that we've obviously thought of. Obviously, here's the button for kickback control. Oh, I'll just wait for it's doing a quick sync there. And then you can see it switches off. It goes amber, because we would recognize within the UI mm -hmm. that, you know, this is something that you might want to pay attention to, because we don't want you to run this machine all the time without kickback control. And then once you're finished, you can just, once you finish your application, you can switch it back on. However, if you do leave it off for any reason, and then you remove the battery. When you put the battery back in, automatically defaulting back on. All right, so we just want to double, we just make sure that there's not going to be any surprises with it. it defaults as a standard kickback control. On. No, no accident. No Exa exactly, <laughs> exactly. All right, okay. Um, any good opportunities to see if we've got any questions that come in? No, it's, it's fairly sparse on there. It's clearly all very self-explanatory with what you've, uh, what you've been saying so far. But don't forget, you can throw in your comments at any point in time, yeah. and we will get to them. I'd imagine that the heat wave has just wiped out everyone. Because <laughs> even, <laughs> even here today, we're looking pretty good, actually, considering we've, we spent, we've, we've survived the week. Yep. Uh, we've been outside drilling multiple holes, making lots of videos in the heat. We survived. I'm sure it's been terrible out there for you guys, I'm sure. Um, yeah, it's pretty uncomfortable, I imagine. <laughs> yeah. But regardless, we're going to power through. Um, Obviously, the main reason we got Lawrence here today, uh, and probably the main reason you guys have tuned in, is you want to know what's new, what's coming out. What can you tell us, Lawrence? Well, I'm glad you asked. So, two exciting new additions to our 18 volt combi range. I'm going to start off with this one. The reason being, we talked earlier about the 18V-21. This is its successor. Okay, so this is coming to us uh, in the final quarter of the year. It's called the GSB18V-45. It's an entry-level brushless combi drill. I'm going to start off just by pointing out the size difference. If you see the profile here, <coughs> we've really managed to shrink this drill down. Okay, compact power is the new motto, I think, within the cordless power tool world. Um, everybody's doing it, and so are we. Um, to put it another way, I've got our current brushless GSB 12-35, okay, so a 12 volt machine. And you can see, if you look at the top there, they are almost identical in size, okay. It's 174 uh, millimeters nose to tip. Lovely, compact brushless combi drill, okay. So, um, two speed gearbox, 20 torque settings. Again, like with uh, many of our other models. Um, and of course, screw driving, drilling, and hammer mode on top as well. Also available as a GSR, if you prefer just the drill driver. The GSR is slightly shorter. 
Um, but uh, everything that we've seen and everything that we've learned about this tool is tremendously capable, um, even though it is uh, a relatively low 45 newton meter uh, machine. Yes, apologies, I'm looking at the wrong camera. <clears throat> okay, so this is, as I say, this is coming a little bit later in the year. We're really excited about it. Um, there'll be more news on our social media channels, so watch this space to stay up to date and get the latest information. Yeah, now I'm really looking forward to this one because uh, it's a size. It's just such a comfortable size. Now, often when Dan and I are working in the workshop, we're just doing a little, you know, we're mucking about, we're making a few things, we're setting up demos and things. We love to, first thing you know, we've got the whole 18 volt range, we've got loads of machines out there. We often just like quite quickly grab one of the 12 volts. And yeah. The main reason yeah. is just because it's such a nice lightweight machine, mm. right? Now you've got the advantage that you've got the powerhouse of an 18 volt platform, but in the same form factor as 12, that's, you know, to me personally, that's incredible. Yep. The GSR version is a game changer for me because of that reduced head length. It's, um, it's really quite compact. Yeah, great to work in tight spaces. Yeah. So yeah, second fix stuff, kitchen fitting, cabinet yeah. making, it's, uh, it's the ideal tool. Uh, so yeah, we're looking forward to bringing this one in. Mm. So what else have we got? Right, uh, over here. I mentioned earlier that the GSP18V-60C has been around with us for five years now. Um, fabulous tool, very, very competent. Its successor should also be arriving at the back end of this year. This is the GSP18V-90C. So. Um, Really, it's occupying that mid-range space in terms of performance and capability, but it's now been packed with even more features uh, and technology. It is a superb tool for drilling into uh, to masonry. Masonry applications, uh, we've tried a couple, very, very smooth, low vibration, and very, very fast drilling speed as well. Mm -hmm. So speaking of drilling speed, up to 29,500 29 RPM, uh, and impacts or beats is 2,100, so yeah, Fast application, um, fast application drill. Again, uh, metal rom chuck, chuck at the front here, uh, 13 mil max capacity, uh, 20 newton meters settings. Tw sorry, 20 torque settings at the top here, nice and familiar, and a two-speed gearbox as well. Now it says it's a C, but we've, uh, we've we've tricked you guys. Normally the connectivity module is here on the left-hand side, but it is a connected tool. We snuck it on the other side. That's a very geeky observation to make. <laughs> well, that's my job. Um, as you can see, it is a connected tool. And also, it's got kickback control. It does. We've actually now starting put, started to put kickback control on the, on the machines themselves. We've recognised you know, this is a really important part of the tool. We don't like shouting about some of our innovations sometimes. It's our greatest weakness. But now with the newer models coming out there, I can tell you very clearly if it's a brushless machine and if it has the kickback mechanism and it's a much, it's a, we've dialed in the algorithm. It's much better. Yeah, so if you look at this, and how quickly that responds. That's less than 90 degrees. I mean, it's, it's almost 45 degrees mm -hmm. when this machine kicks in and senses that something's wrong. So yeah, really, really safe, uh, lots of user protection. And of course, it is selectable, okay? So you can quickly switch it off if you don't want it to kick, kick in. But in addition to that, the machine also comes with a precision clutch. So this is really designed to avoid the over-tightening and rounding off of screw heads. Mm -hmm. Um, you can select the, uh, select the torque setting or talk maximum torque value that you want to reach uh, and you can tell the tool where you want it to stop, mm -hmm. thus avoiding, um, avoiding yeah, lots of rounded screw heads or yeah. bolt heads uh, depending on what you're doing. Yeah. So, so that's a really nice feature as well. So as opposed to it tripping the, um, the mechanical clutch, it's actually got a specific electronic clutch that's going to disconnect it, so you, you, the machine will just stop at the design. Yeah. Point, Again, which is, no, yeah, yeah it's, it's down to preference, as, as, as you know, but it's obviously going to have probably reduced wear, and mm -hmm. also it makes a lot less noise. It just stops. Well, as it. soon as you get up to that set level that you've done with the torque, torque setting ring, mm -hmm. it will just switch off, which makes it a far more elegant way of working sometimes. Yeah. Well, yeah. That, that sort of speed and that amount of impact or beats per minute that we were talking about earlier, um, at, at full uh, trigger depression, that's going to be loud. Yeah. So yeah, it's, oh. a great, it's a great feature to be able to remove that. Yeah, which will make our entire range of 18 volt combi drills brushless That's from right. start to finish. So these two machines, GSB 18 V-45 and also the 90, really looking forward to those coming and joining, joining the range because as you can see, we've got a very comprehensive range out there. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, Rob, is that a fair point now? We could have a quick, quick pause to see whether or not we've had any more questions come in. 
Absolutely. I can tell you that everyone's clearly just getting the point and <laughs> <laughs> don't have anything to ask specifically about the combis. So, I mean, yeah. don't forget that while we're here looking at the combi range right now, doesn't mean that at the end of this live stream, but we can't get onto other tools as well. So if you've got anything related to the Bosch Professional range, chuck them in and we'll answer where we can. Cool. Well, I mean, we've talked about the tools. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess we could briefly talk about things, well, the obvious things like battery compatibility, because we have talked about Procore and Biturbo. Um, and we also could probably touch on a few of the accessories out there that we've got, especially within the Bosch Professional or the Bosch Expert range. Mm -hmm. You saw a few of them already in the video when we were doing uh, the, the demonstration with the GSB 18V-150C. Mm -hmm. Um, but let's have a look at, well, we'll combat, let's start with battery compatibility, obviously. Um, grab the, where have I put it? Where have I put it? Where's the I big one? The uh, here it is. Here? Obviously, yeah, we'll look, we're talking one. about, let's talk about our flagship machine. Obviously, the middle. thank you, mate. Yeah, obviously, this is optimized for running on a Procore battery, but, you know, it is backwards compatible with the traditional cool pack battery system. Mm -hmm. Thank you. There you go. Okay. Right. We wouldn't recommend it necessarily because you, you won't be getting the maximum amount of power, but if you're in a pinch and you've run out of battery power and you've only yep. got a normal cool pack, it's fine. So I probably deafened you out there. Yeah, you deafened me. <laughs> it's fine. It will run perfectly fine on a normal cool pack battery. It will run perfectly fine on a compact pro core battery. This one is his up. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Go run it. Right, perfectly fine. So that one sounded a little bit it's flat. A bit, yeah, it's a little definitely. bit slow because the battery's flat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but obviously, we thoroughly recommend running that on a Procore battery. Now, while I've got this off, I'll have that machine, other machine back, please. There Thank you. you. And you can see the Procore batteries are fully backwards compatible as well with the, the entire range of 80 volt machines, all the way back to 2007, 2005, isn't it? 2005. 2005, wow. Yeah, um, so if you've got an older machine and you want to just get step up, you want to get a bit more runtime out of an 8 amp hour battery, maybe a little bit more performance, mm. you can step up to a Procore battery, especially a 5.5, an 8 yeah. or a 12 amp hour. Uh, and then the same thing if you start buying into the by turbo range and you've obviously got uh, a lot of normal 18 volt batteries. Yeah, you can battery. really take full advantage of a Procore yeah. then. Exactly, because yeah, yeah. obviously you're really going to need the power and runtime when you're doing the really big, ap big applications. But if you're not if you're not doing it at that particular time and you've got a spare normal cool pack battery, yeah. Yeah, you can just use one of those batteries. So that's you know a really important thing about the range. Mm. Okay, so that's a bit about batteries. Not only are we obviously the Procore batteries superior because we're using the 21700 cell, obviously we've upgraded the internals, right? Which means yep. you know on average you get up to about 87% more power, you get about 135% longer uh, runtime, and 150% longer lifetime as well. So there's a lot of great advantages in upgrading just the battery platform alone. Yeah, but obviously, if you were me, I'd obviously want to get the big one. I'd want to go all the <laughs> way up to the 150. But it's horses for courses, guys. I'm not going to tell you you have to go buy the biggest machine. It's whatever you need to do your job the way you want to do it. Okay? Yeah. So a quick question, or maybe a quick chat about some of our accessories before we finish today. Obviously, we showed you a few uh, in the video. Uh, yeah. And as an example, we have uh, some self-cut speed bits. The self-cut speed bits there. That's the pack that we were using to do the uh, the drilling earlier. Obviously, it doesn't come with the 32. That one. Oh, I might have a 32. Um, the uh, the bigger set comes with the 32. But this is this is a good set. Goes from 13 to up to uh, 25 mil, I believe. That's right. Yeah. And so, obviously, you yeah. can purchase these separately. Here's an example of the one of the 30 mils. We went all the way up to 32. Mm. Now, the, I really love these accessories, especially when we're doing a, a comparison against a more traditional spade bit, mm. because of the special angles. Uh, of, the, of the bit itself, they're very aggressive. They yes. really pull through the material. Really helps to have additional torque, so a more mm. torquey machine to help drive this accessory. But it's so much more powerful. And if you're doing a lot of these holes, honestly, the first time you try one of these, you won't be mm. going back. It's seriously, a, ma a, mass a massive radical game changer for us. Yeah. Whereas all the original um, kind of spoon bits like these, they tended to have a flat blade and they would scrape the material out. Mm -hmm. um, these have actually got the um, the ears on there to score the material around in the in the in the circle shape, and then the um, the actual blades for removing the material are spoon shaped. So they basically um, they just they draw out the material as you would with a chisel. Mm. Um, hence the uh, the really quite good cut um, quality that you get with them. So Certainly. yeah, just a smart piece of design really. Mm. Would like to talk to us about the uh, hex nine bits, Dan? Yes, hex nine bits. We have these. Um, uh, we've actually been asked a few questions about these recently. Um, they're uh, the carbide tipped um, ceramic hex 9 um, drill bits. Um, fantastic pieces of kit. 
Um, a lot of people have used these and, um, and, and had a few problems with them. There's, there's, a, there's a way to drill with these properly. You have to rotate the drill bit in a circular moment, motion, such as that, when you're, when you're drilling away. And what that'll do is that keeps, keeps the blade on cut with the material that you're cutting. Um, these are fantastic for, for porcelain tiles or really hard ceramic mm -hmm. tiles. But um, yeah, keep a, you'll notice that the, the, um, the actual profile there is not symmetrical, it's slightly asymmetric. Uh, and that's the part I was talking about with keeping that, that cut on, on point when you use these. So as a comparison, you can see the packaging here. So obviously because it's part of the expert range, See that obviously the packaging is blue. Compare it to what we've got for the soft tiles. So we make it very clear that this is a ceramic bit and this is for hard ceramic. So that's, that's grey porcelain higher, isn't it? Could yeah. you lift that a little higher, Chris? Yeah, no problem. It's catching the light, is it? Yeah, there you go. So this Lovely. is what many people are used to being using. It's the SIL 9 ceramic bits. But the HEX 9 now for hard ceramic is a massive step up. Massive. And obviously it's not just the fact that it will drill harder materials, but it's got such a better longer uh, lifetime. You know, we claim up to about 10, 10 times longer lifetime compared to the mm. SIL 9 bits. So, you know, just these two accessories alone, you know, they're mm. a massive game changer when it comes to using combis for different applications. Yep. However, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the favorite, you know, the, the, the star child for us, which is going to be multi-construction drill bits. So Dan, give us a little little headliner on multi-con, please. Um, so basically, these will cut through pretty much anything you could need to cut through. We're talking about um, red brick, soft tiles, um, uh, plastic, plasterboard, um, OSB, pretty much go through most walls out there to be fair. The beauty of these is if you, you go through the harder materials like a, a brick or a concrete, um, you can go straight back afterwards to cutting a soft tile. Um, the, uh, the carboy tip to it holds the edge absolutely perfectly. So a lot of you guys out there were already using these and you know the beauty of these particular accessories, but um, to anyone who hasn't tried them yet, Get yourself a packet of these because honestly, they really do pay dividends when it comes to drilling. Yeah, and actually, as a fantastic. as something to try, because these are carbide, these are tungsten carbide bits. Okay, they mm. cut through the material. So typically, when you're going to be working in red brick or any kind of harder material, you're going to use the impact mechanism. You're going to be using the percussion mode that we talked about on the whole point of a combi. Mm. Because tungsten carbide cuts through the material, believe it or not, I say believe it or not, it's true. You can switch that function off and just use it in rotary mode because mm. the actual carbide is cutting through the material. So not only are you going to reduce vibration, which isn't it's unpleasant, does, does limit your trigger time if you're working in a professional construction industry, um, but it also reduces sound a tremendous mm. amount. I would think it's up to 60% because you're not needing to engage that, the percussion mechanism. Right? So there are loads of advantages, not just runtime, not just the fact that it's multi-material, but it gives you a lot more flexibility, especially if you're working in say, residential areas, mm. if you're working in someone's residence. Right? Having multi-construction, you know, you can, you've got so many more options. Yeah. It's important to note as well, though there are varying uh, uh, pack sizes of these particular drill bits, they are available individually as well. Mm. So we've got one of the larger ones there. So um, we have a, I think yeah, that's a, a, a that's wide a range, a wide range of yeah. accessories and okay. sizes. Yeah, some uh, massive sizes. I forget what well. size we go up to, but it's it's substantial, isn't it? Yeah, at least yeah. twenty mil. The smaller sizes of this are also available with a hex shank as well as a. Uh, the, um, the cylindrical shank, so yeah, quarter inch drive, even driver, impact drivers, anything like that that can run a quarter inch drive bit, this is what you're after. Okay. I urge you to give it a go though, because they are fantastic. Absolutely, right. So I guess we want to just start rounding up. Last look for any questions? Yeah, yeah, we've got a couple that have come through, they're not exactly combi related. And uh, I've got one from here from Richard Horsham. He says, I would like to know if you're bringing out an 18 volt router <laughs> and nail gun. Thanks. Right. <coughs> I'll start. Nail yep. gun. Yep. Yes. So we've got a second fix nail gun that's already launched. Yeah, it's just come into stock now. Yep. Perfect. The GNH 18V 64M. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, 16 gauge, second fix nailer, um, low vibration, very, very nice handling. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we tested it recently and uh, we had just resounding great feedback. Yeah. Um, and yeah, 64. Uh, yeah, 64 uh, millimeter max um, max nail depth or max nail length, uh, and it's uh, got sequential and bump fire mode as well. Okay, so, so you can do super quick nailing with it. Yeah, that's a flywheel drive model as well, isn't yes, it? it? So is, you're not yeah. dealing with the, with the pneumatic side of things or anything like no, that. No, yeah. exactly. So I mean, if you had the opportunity to join us at one of our um, one of the events that we're at this year, uh, where we actually brought it out, let some people have a bit of hands on. Yeah. Always a good reason to come see me and Dan at any of the shows that we're doing, or mm -hmm. even better, see one of our TSCs at one of the uh, one of our distribution. Um, 
it's it's quite it's lovely. It's, it's yeah. lightweight. It's got low recoil. It's, it's surprisingly quiet for such a hard hit, hitting yeah. nailer. So I know you guys have been waiting for it, but trust me, it was worth the wait. Yeah, talk to your your local Bosch professional dealer yeah. um, to find out more information and availability. Right. Yeah. So and I was going to say the difficult question then is the 18 router. volt router. Yeah, the 18 volt router mm. keeps coming up. Um, it is a gap in our range at the moment, and we are working to fill that gap because you recognise how important it is, particularly to our, our friends in the carpentry and joinery trade. Mm. So uh, there is one in the development phases at the moment. Mm. I can't give you a defined date, um, but it will look and feel uh, slightly like the GKF 600, our corded machine, uh, which it, it exists. Uh, but yeah, it's it's still a little way off. All I would advise is stay close to our social media channels, keep an eye on on our, um, our communications, uh, and we will get it out to you as quickly as we can launch it. Um, yes, <laughs> watch this space. Yeah, working on it as fast as we can. We know we know you guys want it, and obviously we want to mm. make sure that we get out into market. That it's a good product, obviously, um, but we know that you guys are asking for it. Any more? What? Indeed. Uh, Alistair Brown asks, any news on new 18-volt circular saws? Oh, great question. Because mm. we know we can answer that one. Really great <laughs> question, yeah. So we've got a 165-millimeter uh, um, brushless machine coming again towards the end of the year. It will effectively replace the ever-popular GKS 18V-57, which is already in our range. Um, and then next year, we will be launching a left-handed version of the same saw, so you'll have the choice between which side you have the handle on, because I know it's, it's, uh, it's a very uh, it's a divisive subject in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, and then we do have another bi-turbo yes. circular saw coming through also. So that's, we're gonna have a left-hand blade version of the 68, the that's right. GKS 18V, uh, V68 GC as well? Is it just gonna be the C? I'll have to I check believe, that one. Yeah, yeah, we'll double check. Yeah. We'll double so check. you're gonna have the option of not only a new, updated, normal 18 volt, Circ saw, but also a left-handed by turbo, by which turbo. is perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Just uh, look for the L on the name of the machine. Yeah, we make it easy yeah. for you. It's, it's got, got an L on it, left hand. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I'd just like to add there for uh, people who don't quite know our acronyms, the G is basically suggesting that it's guide rail compatible ah, yeah, uh, yeah. and the C is a connected tool via linking to the app on your phone or iPad. Correct. Perfect. Yeah, we like to talk in codes. You probably know that already, but yeah, you need, sometimes you need to translate for us. Yeah, okay. there we go. And uh, interestingly, we've got one from here from uh, Six Atlantis, and he says, I'm not live. I'm watching from the beginning. Just wanted to say, I love my GSB 18V-535C hammer drill here in the States. There we go. Yeah. Ah. And if you have an extra bi-turbo, don't hesitate to send one my way. <laughs> <laughs> um, Richard Horseman says, brilliant. Thanks for answering my questions. So That's no problem, good. Richard. Yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Callum asks, any plans for an 18 volt cooling fan in case of another heat wave? I was just thinking the same thing the other day. Well, um, probably don't recommend it. I quite like using a concrete blower. Yes, <laughs> yeah. It's a bit, <laughs> probably not the best thing to be doing, but uh, unfortunately not at the moment. I haven't seen any plans for an 18 volt fan. Yeah, no plans at the moment, but uh, never say never. Uh, we are always looking to evolve and develop the system and make it more, more um, versatile. And yeah, certainly in, you know, our, our, businesses uh, running in some of the hotter countries in the world, uh, really there should be a solution like that which we could bring into the mm. UK. But yeah, not right now, leave it with us. Mm -hmm. cool. Brilliant. They, they keep coming in um, and I'm afraid Kissy Mouse, um, apologies <laughs> if I get the name wrong there, uh, but how about a brushless 12 volt circular saw with a bigger blade? Oh, brushless. Hmm. Now the only one we've got at the moment is the, um, is, a, is it the 15? The 45. Little, um, Little 12 volt one. It'll do a single sheet of OSB, so it's got to be a. Mm. It's got to be 20 something, isn't it? We should know. Yeah. Terrible. Yes. Um, that, 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 could, that could probably do with an update. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll be honest, uh, I would agree, that would be good. I've not seen anything on the roadmap for an updated 12 volt circular saw yet. No, no. not yet. But again, uh, never say never. Mm. Watch the space. Yeah, the, the 12 volt range, you know, that's not, uh, that's a range that we obviously want to add to, and it's a very important range for us. I mean, obviously we made up the point about with the new GSB 18V-45, that that form factor is great, mm. and the reason is, and the reason uh, we said before is that, well, that Dan and I would often reach for a 12 volt just because it's such a lovely size. Mm. And for the typical guy training, maybe working for a housing association, going up flights of stairs to go into people's homes, 
You don't want to be lugging all your heavy 18 volt gear. The 12 volt sits perfectly as a kind of tool that you'd want to use in someone's house. Mm. It does all the fixing sizes, Be does everything. Beautiful for laminate floor in the 12 volt one. Mm, exactly. Absolutely fantastic for yeah. just, just uh, nibbling down an edge to get around the doorway exactly. or something like that. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, so a brush dispersion, yes, mm. well, that is the way we're going. Um, I would imagine at some point in the future, but unfortunately I've not heard anything no. recently. On the topic of 12 volt, I know we're talking about combis, but guys, the Hexi Click system, mm. you honestly have to. The 12 volt flexi system we love. Don't forget there's also an 18 volt flexi system. We didn't cover it today. It's not technically a combi, it's a drill driver variant. Yep. But you know, if, if you haven't tried a flexi fit, you're, you're really missing out. But I think I've got the time. I think we're coming up to the end now, aren't we? So I guess we'll have to just say thank you very much for joining us. Sorry about the technical issues we had earlier. You know, we're always ironing out these problems. This is, this is live, so you can't always work out what's <laughs> going to happen and what's not going to happen. Again, thanks very much for joining. Thanks for all the excellent questions. Uh, obviously, we're going to have another live stream in maybe a couple of weeks. Yep. Yeah. Um, we're not sure exactly what the topic's going to be, so if you guys have got some suggestions, if there's specific topics that you guys want to uh, us to talk about, me and Dan, maybe Lawrence will come back and join us, feel free to pop it in the chat so we can take that under advisement and see whether or not we can do that in a couple of weeks for you guys. Okay? Yeah. So, thank you from Chris. Thank you from me. <laughs> and thanks from me as well. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah.